<laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, so I'm going to run through the Quandl API, uh, just pulling Daniel down from Quandl. Has anybody used Quandl or familiar with that? Okay, a few. Cool. So I put this quote up here, the Wikipedia for quantitative data. I love that term. Um, the CEO of Quandl actually used that in one of the talks that I listened to. Um, I finally remembered to put an about me slide in here. This is the first time I've actually done that. Uh, my name is Erin Yenner. I work for a company called Atmex in their BI department. Uh, Atmex is an e-commerce company that actually uh, resell, uh, sells gold and silver, so is on the uh, financial vertical. So I've come across Quandl, worked with it a little bit at work. And after I worked with it at work, I started Googling a little bit more about Quandl, what it is, what other people use it for. And I love this video that I've linked here um, by their CEO, which explains kind of what they're all about and why he founded the company. Also a link to Quandl itself. So in watching this video here specifically, uh, there are two main aims for setting up Quandl. The first one, uh, stated before was to become the Wikipedia of quantitative data. You can go to Wikipedia at any time, search for any subject, get a whole bunch of information back, it links all over the place, but you can't do the same thing for quantitative data. So that main idea just caught on to me. And I was talking to my brother the other day. My brother has lived for over a decade, I believe at this point, uh, in Japan, starting a, a wonderful family. And I visited him, we were driving around, and we saw this symbol, the Carisha mark, on a lot of the cars. We started talking about it, and he explained to me that the Carisha mark is placed on the cars of people 70 and older who might have uh, an impairment in their driving. So, I thought to myself, well, I could go to Wikipedia <laughs> and figure out how many people might have this correlation mark on their car, or I could go to the Wikipedia for quantitative data <laughs> and begin to figure it out for myself. So I started bugging around a little bit on Quandl, and I found out that there is actually this population of Japan by age group data set that I can mess around with a little bit. So let's see if I can pull that up. Who are you? Great. Nothing really special about the code here. Um, really, what I'm doing is just importing uh, Quandl, which we'll talk about in a second, um, my API key, and telling it to get me this data set. Printing it, okay, that's, that's a lot more than, than I wanted to see, right? So um, I took a look back at the data set, and I was like, really, what I wanted to see was just total Japanese population versus that 70 plus population. So uh, let's modify that. Run it again, and save it, and then run it again. And okay, that's looking a lot better, but really what I wanted to know when I was talking to my brother was what is the population over 70 the most in right now versus the overall population. And again, I could go to Wikipedia, probably find it after some bugging around, but I could also find it that, okay, in units of uh, 10,000 people that you have about, is that a 22% split of your 70 plus population. So that, that's pretty cool. And of course, you can start doing a little bit more transformation. You could actually graph it. You could actually do percentages, that kind of stuff. So there you go. That's, that's your uh, 
quantitative Wikipedia data there. <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, yeah, he's, he's got something good going on there. Um, and then I started thinking uh, back to what I actually use it for at work, which of course is the bigger, broader spectrum of what Quantal is all about, which is their financial data. So uh, in this video, which I'll link to, to you again, um, he uh, explains how he's, you know, going for investors and going to Silicon Valley and you need a bigger, broader explanation than just wanting to be the Wikipedia because Wikipedia's one flaw is that it's free and people are not really gonna give you money for that. Um, but he says that he wants to do what Wikipedia did to Britannica to Bloomberg. So this is again how you <laughs> set up <laughs> your, your Quandle package. It's very simple. You can um, set it up with the, the pip install like you do um, normally. Sign up for your free API key. Um, and then access all of that uh, great financial data that is really difficult to get. You know, you can't go on Yahoo Finance. You can't go on. Um, Google Finance anymore and just get that free API feed. Um, so this is the answer that I was able to find to get some of those free financial data sets that uh, are really useful when you're looking to do uh, correlations, Monte Carlo simulations, those cool things that you really want to find out about the market. Um, so those free data sets are going to be, you know, your end of day stock, close, open, volume, those types of things. The premium data sets, you are going to have to pay for for your intraday data, those types of things. But the built-in capabilities are really cool. Um, so your default will be a pandas data frame. You have the option to change it to a pandas array, uh, excuse me, a numpy array. Um, and there is a whole bunch of stuff that you can do with it um, just through the API. So let me show you that again. Just that one. And I decided to go with Bitcoin because everybody's interested in what Bitcoin is doing right now. So um, if we change that and just take a look at the uh, Bitcoin chart, uh, ingesting it with my API key, which I'm just reading in through a file so that I don't actually post it out there. Um, but again, it's free, so it's not that big a deal. Um, and then grabbing the Quandle um, ticker, returning it as a NumPy array, plotting it will give you an error. I did. Six. Thanks, everybody. And there you go. So that, that looks very familiar to everybody, right? And it's just kind of a testament to the actual uh, data that Quandle has. It's very reliable. It's pre-formatted and with, let's call it four lines of code, right? And I've got a, a few other things here that I think are just testaments to how nifty this actually is. Um, we can go here to just take a look at a um, comparative of the Bitcoin and the NASDAQ charts um, comparing the daily highs, I can actually go in, grab just the daily high columns, um, specify my start date because Bitcoin hasn't been around for as long as the NASDAQ is. Um, I do have a little bit of transformation that I put in here because uh, the Bitcoin chart is a daily ticker, whereas the NASDAQ is only around uh, on the five days of the work week.
And I left this one in so that you can see sometimes there are some errors. I've worked with this data set before. You know, you could do, um, you could again drop a zero. You could do just uh, backfill, forward fill, anything like that to kind of just uh, get rid of your zeros or, or that data issue there. So, uh, you know, kind of along the same lines, you just want to see, okay, well, um, well, what about just, just 2016? That's kind of when Bitcoin started getting really, really um, popular. People were really interested in what was going on there. Um, and then moving towards just a correlation, very simple correlation. Um, what did our 2016 comparative look like? Again, you've got that dip there, but Kind of looks like we might have something with the correlation there. So just wanted to check that out. Um, I'm going to have to uncomment this one and just check out what, whoops, what our correlations look like. Don't need our plots. And I can tell you if it starts running too. Any guesses? We'll <laughs> What's that? Hmm. Well, I'm not sure why that's not going there, but usually it's pretty quick. Hmm. So it looks like you didn't even have to like install NumPy or Pandas or anything like with Quandle because they just install those things for you or like so, let, let me go back here um, while that is thinking about it. Um, it does, you do have to uh, have NumPy and Pandas pre-installed in order for it to work. Um, there are some requirements as to the versioning on NumPy and Pandas, but um, other than that, it is pretty self-sufficient. Very quick and easy install. And if anybody's ever, you know, tried to do any of this stuff that I've listed under the built-in capabilities, it's, it's incredibly easy to do with Quandl. Um, the pre-transformation, the date selection, especially merging the time series data, it's really, really an easy platform to work with. And sorry the correlation is not working out, but um, just to actually show you guys what this looks like and how simplistic this is, um, let me pull up the Bitcoin chart here in Quandle. So you can see a lot of these um, metrics that I'm mentioning, the open, the low, the close, um, here's the tabular format. So you can kind of see it visually before you're actually pulling it in. Uh, here is your, your cheat code here, essentially, to, to pull it into uh, your, your code. The Quandle code that we were working with back here in our editor. And even those transformations, if you wanted, if you you know wanted to see, okay, how do I get a um, percent change across last six months? Is going to actually have these um, cheat codes kind of embedded here in the code for you. So it's an incredibly easy platform to work with and kind of ingest into your data flow. Um, if you wanted to see, just without even um, working with the API, how uh, your daily open compared to the volume, you'd be able to see that. So a pretty cool competitor for your pricey Bloomberg terminal. All right, any other questions? Cool, well, thank you.